boys and girls, it's great to be with you again. As many of you go back to school this week or to preschool or kindergartens. I want to continue reading some of my favorite books to you. And I came across this one called The Blues of Flats Brown. Flats Brown is a dog. And the blues is a type of music uh, from the <clears throat> southeast of America. Flats was born in a junkyard, and there's the junkyard, in Mount Bayou, Mississippi. The junkyard was owned by a man named A.J. Grubbs. Now, A.J. Grubbs was the meanest man in Mound Bayou. He was so mean, he didn't even like himself. He had a little piece of mirror on the door of the hut he slept in, and every time he saw his face, he spit on it. Grubbs had two dogs, Flats and Caleb, and he was mean to both of them. Flats was young, no more than a teenager in dog years. Caleb was old and had a touch of arthritis in the hip, but he had a good heart. What Flats liked most of all was to play the blues. He had an old guitar and he could just make that thing sing. He would spend all his free time sitting and picking out tunes on that guitar and singing. Did I tell you he could sing? Man, he could sing up a storm. You hear me? A.J. Grubbs had other ideas. He wanted Flats and Caleb to be fighting dogs so he could brag on them. One night, Grubbs brought some strangers into the junkyard. They had a big, ugly bulldog with them. Caleb, what are they fixing to do? Flats asked. I think they're going to make me fight that dog, Caleb said. Caleb, you're too old, Flat said. That dog will... I know, Caleb said. I know. It was a terrible fight with barking and growling and yelping all over. Caleb was hurt real bad. You stupid dog, A.J. Grubbs kicked Caleb. You're making me look stupid. Flats will fight tomorrow and he better win. Caleb, I'm not a fighting dog, Flat said when A.J. Grubb had left. I'm a blues playing dog. I know, Caleb said. We gotta run away from here. That night, when the moon was behind a cloud, the two friends crawled under the fence. Caleb, why is AJ so mean? Flats asked. Sometimes I think he's like that junk in the yard, Caleb said. Just a throwed away man. And there's Caleb and Flats sneaking out. Well, Flats and Caleb made their way to Shantytown. They lived where they could and made enough money to eat by Flats playing on the street. People would listen to him playing the blues and throw them coins. Hey you, the blues playing dog, everyone talking about? A man asked one day with a gold tooth. Yeah, that's me, Flats said. Well, why don't you come and play in my club, the man asked. And that's how Flats got to play in the black club called the Curly Q. And there's the man with the gold tooth. Every night, Flats played and Caleb backed them up on the bones. Flats put down some mean sounds. He played the bent tail blues, the mangy muzzle stomp, and his favorite, the freaky flea blues. Just like he owned them. And one day, right in the middle of the bad barking blues, who come in the door but A.J. Grubb. You're my dog! Grubbs called out, and I'm here to get you and take you back to the junkyard. Grubbs tried to grab Flats out of the club. He would have done it too if Caleb hadn't chomped down on his leg. While Grubbs hopped around one foot, Flats and Caleb hop-poured it out the front door. They looked really scared as they took to the road again. They didn't stop this time, and they got clear to Memphis, Tennessee. There they are. Memphis, Tennessee. If we keep playing on the street, A.J. will find us again, Grubb said. I can't stand no fighting, Flat said, sorry. Maybe you can make a record, Caleb said. 
looking at a sign for Imperial Records. They found a little recording studio on Beale Street. The man in the studio said he'd never heard of a blues playing dog, but he gave Flats a chance. Flats sat on a stool and played a little song he'd written himself called The Junkyard Heap. The man hired him on the spot. People who heard Flats' record wondered where he'd come from. Some were saying he had six fingers on each paw, and some said that his wife had run off to Mexico and left him with a broken heart. None of that was true, but it sold a lot of records. You can imagine what happened next. Old A.J. Grubbs, bad breath and all, showed up at the recording studio, sweating and acting ugly. That dog is mine, hollered Grubb. I come to get him. There it is there. He looks very fearsome. Doesn't he? Well, Flats jumped out the window and Caleb ran out the back door. They ran down an alley, cut through a tent revival meeting, and didn't stop until they reached the railway tracks. They were dead tired as they waited for a train going north. When it came, Caleb put his arms around Flats and said goodbye. Goodbye? Flats looked at his best friend. Flats aren't too old to be running like this, Caleb said. You're young and you've got a whole lot of life and a lot of music in you. But Caleb, we're a team, said Flats, choking back the tears. It's you that Grubbs is after, Caleb said. You gotta go and Caleb gotta stay behind. Now go, boy. Here comes the midnight special. Flats felt bad, but he knew Caleb was right. The old dog was too beat down and too weary to run anymore. On the train, Flats wrote a real sad song called The Dog Gone Long Gone Blues. He dedicated that song to his friend Caleb. And there he is on the train. New York was the biggest place Flats did ever see. For a while, he just wandered the streets, looking at the tall buildings, and feeling as out of place as a three legged skunk in a Georgia hoedown. A hoedown, by the way, is kind of a dance. By the time he found a place where they played the blues, he was skinny as a rail. Blind Buddy Doyle, the king of the country blues, was the owner, and he told Flats to sit down and play. Yes, Flats, sitting down with Blind Buddy. Flats was nervous, but he started to play. He played the sounds of the waterfront in Mount Bayou and the music from the little church down the street from the junkyard. He played the lonely sounds of a freight train and the hot sounds of the curly cue. He really put his heart and soul in his playing. I might be blind, blind buddy Dole said, but I can see the dream you're playing. Flats got the job and did good, real good. Everybody got to loving him. But I guess you know what the wind blew in one stormy night. That's right, A.J. Grubbs. Soon as Flats saw Grubbs, he remembered what Caleb had said when he stayed back in Memphis. He sat down and started playing a little tune he called The Ain't No Use Runnin' Blues. I got you now, Grubbs said. You going back with me. Flats felt lower than a bow-legged worm. And then he thought about what Caleb had said and the grubs was just like the junk in his yard. He was a throwed away man. Flats felt bad about going back to Mount Bayou, but he felt bad for grubs too. Mr. Grubbs, I just want to play one more tune before I go, Flats said. This is a song I wrote called The Gritty Grubbs Blues. It goes like this. Flats started playing the Gritty Grubbs Blues. But a man nobody understood and everybody thought was bad because he lived in a junkyard. As Flats played, the tears started running down Grubbs' face. There he is there. That song touched Grubbs deep inside the way blues do sometimes. Flats, that is the best song I ever heard, he said when Flats was done playing. You go and plan that song and I'll go back home and leave you in peace. And with that, A.J. Grubbs picked himself up and walked right out the door. All he needed was somebody to show him a little love. 
After that, everyone thought Flats was going to stay in New York and get filthy rich. What they didn't know was that Flats was a blues playing dog, not a filthy rich kind of dog. About a week later, Flats got his guitar, packed up some fried chicken in a cardboard suitcase, and left New York. There he is. That was the last time anybody around here heard from Flats. Once in a while, people from Savannah, Georgia, would talk about two, God, two dogs that played the blues down near the waterfront. They say one dog played the guitar and the other one backed them up on the bones. And their favorite tune was the Freaky Flea Blues. Some people don't believe that. I do. And there they are. Oh, Caleb and Flats. You like that story? About songs reaching into people's heart. Songs and courage changing people. Changing even bad people. It's a lovely, hopeful story. Have a blessed week. See you.